Okay, now if you remember last time, we talked about passive heating using water in barrels that you might store along the north wall. And we talked about using 200 gallon, 2,000 gallons, I'm sorry, of water to do that. And the basic principle, if you remember, was that for passive heating like that, you need to have some excess heat during the day to dispose of, to put into your passive heating uh, system in order to be able to use it at night. Now, I did mention an earth battery, and we'll talk about an earth battery right now uh, very quickly. An earth battery would be basically the same thing, except instead of using water tanks, what you'd use is basically the floor of your greenhouse, but you'd have to excavate down uh, quite a ways, meaning four feet, five feet, six feet, and the idea would be you'd run uh, pipes six inch in diameter or something like that, and you'd string them all up down there and then bury them and blow air through those pipes. And the magic thing about that is, uh, day or night, if you blew the air through the pipes, the, you're below the frost line, at least in the northern hemisphere or southern hemisphere, kind of in the same position we're on that, the air coming out of those pipes would always be about 40 degrees or so. So at night, if all you were trying to do was keep your greenhouse from freezing, you could use that. Now, you could use it to store heat too if you had excessive heat to dispose of. And during the day, you could do it, do very much what you do with those water tanks. You take the heat that you had in the greenhouse and basically send it down underground through those air pipes and uh, heat up the uh, storage medium, which of course would be. Uh, uh, the dirt down there, and then at night you could uh, bring it back up and use it. It wouldn't work any better than the water, and I really don't like the idea so much because if you've already got a greenhouse established, you really can't do that because it would require you digging up the whole greenhouse, and and for a 2,000 gallons of water thereabouts, and I won't go into the numbers, but in my greenhouse, which is about uh, 24 by 40 roughly, it would take to use the same amount of dirt to store the same amount of heat energy, it would take uh, uh, about 10 duck tr dump truck loads of dirt to do that. In other words, you'd have to excavate down, get all the dirt out of there, and it would basically be the footprint of this greenhouse, and dig it down about four, five, six, eight feet or something like that, and then spread all kinds of uh, piping through there, and then bury it back up and so forth. And uh, then you'd get something like the performance you would get in 2,000 gallons of water. So I don't really like that because it's just too much to do. Now, if you live in an area where, you know, the winters really aren't that cold, and all you're really concerned about is trying to keep your greenhouse from freezing a couple of times a year because, you know, that's what you would see, then a passive system should work for you pretty good. Whether it's an earth uh, battery or water, it should, it should work. If you live in a climate where winters truly get cold, to where you can count on every day a greenhouse like this without any assistance would get well below freezing, you're going to have to put heat into it. And you're going to have to store heat to be able to put, out, put, in, put in here at night to keep it warm. An earth battery wouldn't work that well for that kind of an application because the only way you can heat the ground underneath if you have one is by the difference in the air going, the temperature of the air going through the pipes you have and the, and the temperature of the dirt down there. You're not going to get air going down there that's any hotter than what's in your greenhouse. So you might have 70, 80, 90 degree, 90 degree air going down and trying to heat that mass up. Now, and, and the, the closer the dirt gets to the temperature of the air that's going through it, the slower the heat transfer. So you're quite limited with something like that. Now, the, on the other hand, if you use water, you can build a little room somewhere close by and easily put two or three or four thousand gallons of water in there. Now, remember what I told you was that 2,000 gallons of water is about the same heat storage as if, as if I dug up this and turned the whole uh, footprint of this greenhouse into, a earth, into an earth battery. 
That's the difference in size because earth dirt is not as good of a heat storage medium as water is. You need a lot more dirt to do that. So you can see that if you have 2,000 gallons of water, it's a lot less space than uh, than 10 dump trucks loads full of dirt would do. And it's a lot easier to scale it up and down and so forth. And the other thing you can do is you can hook a heater to it, like a, a water heater or a boiler or something like that. And you can get your water source way higher than 90 degrees. You can get it up to easily 130, 140 degrees. And when you do that, the temperature differential of the water that you're using to heat your greenhouse is uh, a lot higher than 60, 70 degrees that your greenhouse might be. In other words, you get 130 degree water coming into a heat exchanger and your greenhouse is 60 or 70 degrees, that's like 70 degrees differential. So, and then that easily and readily transfers heat a lot better than if you're trying to get heat out of something where the temperature is only 70 or 80 degrees itself. Uh, if that makes sense to you. Anyway, so what I'm going to do this summer is I'm going to expand my uh, heating capacity, the water tanks that I have already, and I'll show you a little bit about that. And what You see, I have a system in my house that's uh, used to supply radiant heating, and I modified it some time ago to have a lot more uh, water. I've got a thousand gallon reservoir in there made out of a couple of plastic tanks. And I did some calculating uh, the other day, and I figured that if I expand that to 2,000 gallons and heat it with solar power, that I do have some of during the wintertime, then I can heat the house and the greenhouse effectively and not require the use of external fuel like natural gas or propane nearly as much as if I just had uh, a plain old uh, gas-fired uh, boiler or something like that. I'll explain that later. But anyway, I'm sold on the idea that water for your passive or your active heating system for your greenhouse is a much, much better medium than an earth battery. Because an earth battery, once it's there, you're done, you can't modify it. Whereas, a water system, you can scale it up and down as you need. If you need more water, put another tank on it. If you need less water, you can not build it so big. Uh, and if you need more heat, you can put another heater or something like that. But uh, an earth battery, you're just stuck with what you got. And that's the way it is. You really can't change much. Now, if you'll pardon my mess here for just a moment. I've never been a very good housekeeper. But this is what I call my pump room. And all this is, is two tanks. There's one, you can see the lid of that. And there's another tank over there. And you see I've wrapped insulation around these tanks. And that's just uh, standard construction type insulation. And each tank holds 500 gallons. So I have 1,000 gallons of water here. And if I move over here, you can see some of the pumps and things I have. On this side, that is a propane water heater, and that over there is an electric water heater. And this over here is a little heat exchanger I've rigged up that recovers some of the heat from the exhaust that comes out of the propane water heater, the hot air that comes out of their hot exhaust. Anyway, the point I'm trying to make here is that this is just a small room built onto the back of my house. And it is not too difficult to do, and uh, being insulated like it is, it's, it's kind of easy to put this together. This is much, much easier than trying to dig an earth battery out underneath your entire greenhouse. And the other advantage of something like this is what I'm going to do this summer is... Uh, is expand this out that way and put two more tanks in and then I will have 2,000 gallons here. Now there is one other thing you can do and we'll talk about that later. That's an electric water heater. That 
turns on when I have excess solar power to use to dump into the tanks here, heat-wise. I'm going to expand that capability and uh, be able to do that, use that to heat the greenhouse and uh, my own home as well because I have radiant heating in the house and right now these were primarily built to uh, supply the radiant heating and uh, I think I can kill two birds with one stone by uh, using the radiant heating, using the uh, solar power that I'm going to install as well, more additional solar power and uh, heat the home as well as the greenhouse. I'll have excess heat to do that.